Hello. Hello. Welcome to Enemy Album Club. I'm Dan Stubbs. I'm Leonie Cooper. And we're going to talk about some albums, aren't we? Format busting this week. Instead oh. of doing three albums, we're doing three and a half albums, right? You're right, we're doing three albums and one EP. Yeah. It's exciting. I, I, I would say it's a mini album, because for you? me, an EP's got four tracks and this one's got six, but that's just semantics. Semantics, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jinx! Now you can't say anything for the rest of Album Club. <laughs> No, okay, you can. Oh, what's the th how do I release you? Dan Stubbs? Okay. <laughs> so without further ado, the big album this week is, uh, album. is our cover star this week as well. There, there he is. is. Feeling his, <laughs> all the feels. Grabbing his crotch. He uh, is indeed. It is Sam Smith, and the album is called The Thrill of It All. I'm way too good at goodbye. I'm way too good at too good at goodbye. So, mm. mouthful of tea. Yeah. So, the thrill of it all. I'm ready. Could have been, you hear the album title, The Thrill of It All, and you your think, first ooh. thought is not known for thrills on based on his last album. Sam Smith is not. Thrills and Sam Smith don't necessarily go together. No. Does this one change that? No, well, yeah, you hear Thrill of It All, you think, ooh. This is mm. going to be an exciting album. Mm. And it's not to say it's not exciting, but it's not upbeat, I would say. It is 10 ballads. This is a, <laughs> this is a proper breakup album, 10 sad songs. He has said that only three of the songs are about his own personal breakup and the other songs are all about like his mates and stuff. But that's, Crowdsourced breakups. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's neither here nor there, because this is, this is a sad record. So if you don't know it's who Sam Smith is... Three about his and seven about Adele's. <laughs> She's getting a lot of traction out of that breakup, <laughs> isn't she? So Sam Smith is the 25-year-old singer from like grew up in Cambridgeshire, kind of Londoner now. He released his debut album 2014 in the Lonely Hour, which yeah. just went massive. He yeah. did an Adele. He he broke America. He won an Oscar. He won Grammys. He won Brit Awards. He became a very you know, kind of recognisable figure. Opened a chain of uh, London pubs with affordable beer prices. He did indeed, mm. though not so affordable now. Actually, I went to one last night mm. and I was like, I might as well be in his spoons. But the stained glass was delightful. The champion yeah. in Soho. Mm. I don't okay. know if you've been. It's nice, isn't no. it? I've gone off, gone off piece there, haven't I? So for the past year and a half, he's been pretty low key. We haven't kind of seen, not heard of Sam Smith. And then about a month ago, he's like, oh, well, that's been here's a single. Did, I guess was the Bond thing, wasn't it? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Mm. He won an Oscar for that. Yeah. He's he so did. good at music. He wins film awards. <laughs> yeah. That's so impressive. That doesn't always happen. So yeah, he's been away for about a year and a half. He, he went out with someone, he broke up with someone and thought, mm, This is material. 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 Indeed, mm. so 10 track album. It's only 35 minutes long. I think the last one was only about half an hour as mm. well. So it's sort of wham, bam, thank you, Sam. Oh, <laughs> you prepared that, didn't you? No, I didn't actually. It okay. just came out actually. Oh, I'm good just very good at words and stuff. So the new <laughs> album, all about, all about breakups. It's quite bleak. Uh, Too Good at Goodbyes is with the first big single. It's a big gospel song and we were talking about Jesse Ware the other week and I feel like a lot of these songs are very kind of in a very much a similar vein they sound like Jesse Ware songs like her songs sound like his songs his songs sound like her songs they're mates I don't know if that has and any another thing that's crept in here I think as well is mm. a, one of this year's big success stories has been Rag and Bone Man and I feel like there's a bit Indeed. of there's Prey in particular yeah it's very Rag and Bone Man Timberland produced Prey right yeah mm, there we are Prey was inspired uh, by his uh, Sam's time spent in Iran Sorry, it's Iraq with the War Child charity. And it's about opening your eyes to what's going on in the world. Right, okay. Yeah, because he thought he was a bit blinkered before. And, and there then, is he, a then he went there yeah, and it's like, a... whoa, there's loads of bad shit going on in the world. Not just in, what's in here, it's <laughs> happening out there <laughs> as well. But it's more, it's another song about bad shit happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But so Prey, there's a kind of, there's, there's a religious thing to it. One of the, probably the best song on here, I think, is Him, mm -hmm. which is, quite clever because it's sort of about a relationship with this kind of unspecified him but then it's also is it about his relationship with God and mm -hmm. then there's this kind of gospel choir comes in and it's like and that's a really interesting song as well because even say five years ago a kind of a male gay artist would not be singing with the male pronoun as well so the fact that yeah, he's yeah. singing mm. about a man is really interesting and progressive also that song sounds a lot like Hello by Adele <laughs> right, does it? Yeah. Just melodically, if we're there talking is a similarity. About shit that sounds like shit. There's one on here that sounds <laughs> a lot like Creep, which is not escaping people on the internet. Oh, really? Because I thought yeah. there was a song on here that sounds a lot like Feeling Good by Nina Simone. 
Right. Because yeah. also, talking of Nina Simone, and he has said a lot that he's inspired by the big female divas. So when he was growing up listening to music, he wasn't listening to male singers, he was listening to Whitney, Winehouse, Shaka Khan, all those people. And he has an amazing vocal on, like, on this album. It is incredible. There's a lot of emotion that he can portray with his voice. Mm. And if, if you're feeling sad, uh, listen to... Listen to Sam Smith and you'll feel even sadder because he can. He knows your sadness. He is your sadness. <laughs> you write the He's voices and stuff. feeling all of the feels. And I guess, like, probably on the last album, the worst thing you could say about him was that he was a bit boring. Mm -hmm. This one, he definitely lets you more into kind of his life and in mm -hmm. this interview it's really, I mean he's, he's very revealing in this interview as well. Out today. I think he's sort of like kind of obviously gained some confidence and, mm -hmm. and thought you know what sets me apart is myself and kind of there's a lot more him in the lyrics. Yeah. So while it's yeah they kind of some, some of the ballads might wash over you a little bit there's definitely more interesting stuff going on than there was last time. Yeah he said there's a song on here called Burning as well which he said is his most personal song ever written so he's really drawing from this relationship breakdown. A, tri a trip to the clinic. <laughs> Don't know. It was only a four-month relationship as well. I was reading. But Five sometimes, months I read. But you oh, know, right, okay. You know, sometimes they're the ones that can hurt you the most, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> what could be? You know, all that potential taken away. He talks about smoking ciggies on there as well. Which he talks seems, about it a few times, doesn't seems he? <laughs> like unusual. If your voice is your thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Twenty a day, he says at one point. Yeah. I wonder if he chains them all really quickly and gets out away with it at the start of the day. Maybe he's gonna. Maybe he's angling for sort of a vaping. Sponsorship. Campaign or something, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Who kill knows? You, Sam. Don't do it. Don't. Um, but pick up NME today and read this very good interview with him. You find out a lot, don't you? How many um, grabbed crotches out of five grabbed crotches will you give Sam Smith's the thrill of it all? I'm going to give him three crotches, grabbed crotches. Me too. Yeah. Three. Excellent. Consensus is reached. Uh, Dan, what is the next album that we're discussing? Well, the next one is... Uh, it's an artist who last was seen on XL Records as a, as a he, disco. He was. A disco artist, and now has returned as a sort of something slightly India. It's Shamir, and the album is Revelations. We out here struggling. They say we don't feel pain. They say we're gross and vain. Ratchet, Leonie. Ratchet. 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 What are, you, what are you saying? I don't know what it means, but that was the title of uh, his great disco-y hit. It was. The... So it came out two years ago, Ratchet, on XL. Not a hit. It should have been a hit. It should have been. We had yeah. that song on regular, yeah. which was amazing. So he was this guy from Las Vegas. He must have been like 19. He was really quite young when this record came out. And it's like electro-funk. And yeah, it was the, a great album that never was. It didn't really get picked up much, but it was brilliant. But he got dropped by this record label because mm. obviously it didn't sell much and that's what happened. Mm. That's what happens when you don't sell many records. The label are like, yeah. Did he allow himself to wallow in that defeat or did he pick and off and record a new album? We know the answer because he, he actually put a sort of halfway house album out in between, didn't he? They recorded mm. in a day and then this really is his third album now. Exactly, Self yes. Self-recorded mm -hmm. um, and very different from... So different. Yeah. So unless... You, I think the only thing in common that it has with the last album is his voice has got quite a distinctive kind of con contralto voice. Can you, hit, can you hit one of his notes for a demonstration? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's maybe a bit me, me, up me, a bit, me, me. up a bit. Yeah, it's that. N not that. <laughs> it's quite high. That high voice. And yeah, that's the only similarity that has. You would not know it was the same artist at all. So this is a lo-fi bedroom record because he has said that his favourite band this is like quite an obscure band the Vivian Girls do you remember the Vivian Girls? No. Right yeah okay exactly they were quite a kind of niche act about six years ago like DIY garagey stuff oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they I were nice maybe yeah. even longer than six years ago they, they were good but I feel like he's probably the only person in the world who would say Vivian Girls are his favourite band mm. not, not that they're bad but mm. just that they're so kind of obscure. So he has kind of taken his lead from them and done this, this back to basics, kind of very authentic, genuine, raw album. And it's, like, you can hear that the kind of, not cheapness sounds like, a, like I'm dissing it, but I'm not, but he's obviously done this on a budget and you can hear the kind of, the vocals are a bit crackly, you can hear feedback, you can hear a bit of distortion, but that none of that masks the fact that these are kind of really melodic, nice pop songs, there's kind of doo-wop 50s inspired songs on there. It's almost a little bit 
country. There's stuff that reminds me of like Juliana Hatfield and sort of early 90s, like post grunge stuff One of them's happening. Well, Pixies, isn't it? That, uh, yeah. You have a song with the sort of bassy intro, I think that's the one. But it's, all, it's just really lo fi and just like, warm and nice and crackly. And he's also said he loves people like Mac DeMarco as well. And it's definitely of that school rather than like glitterball funk, which is what he was doing before. Because he said he didn't actually like that kind of music. Mm. He likes the Vivian girls and like country music and things that are a bit more just laid back. But he's a big talent. I don't know if this will be the one that gets him sort of his mm. big breakthrough, but like I think he'll, he's someone we will see over the coming years. Like I think you know he he has great greatness ahead of him. I don't know if this is the one that's going to kind of find his. No, soldiers. but it'll definitely. It's nice that he's kind of like right. This is what I this is what I do. This is what I like actually. Mm. And he's kind of marking his his turf. The album cover is kind of terrifying as well, isn't it? So Pardon? This cover is kind of terrifying, isn't Intense. it? Intense. You see you, you, the, yeah. the, the sort of seal together. It looks like a human centipede. Yeah. Post or something. Always really... you and the human centipede. You just won't stop <laughs> talking about it. Um, but yeah, he's still only at 22, yeah. so it's sort of early, early days. And yeah. this reinvention is just really lovely. It's just a nice, nice, warm, kind of cosy, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel like that. How many uh, links of a five-link human centipede would you give this album? I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to give it four. Four, four, a four-person four, centipede. Four people in the in the human centipede. Okay, I'll also give it. I'm going to give it three people in the centipede. So. So that makes a seven-person human centipede. That's quite a big one. Yeah, yeah. Are I we circling be, back? Is I'll it a full circle? Backseat frontsies. No, there's no frontsies because you have to like the it's chain. at the front. Never break the chain. Yeah. Can, oh, we, stop, okay, right. can we stop talking about the human centipede now? <laughs> I might vomit. But on a Halloween tip. Oh, oh. segue. Segue. Mm -hmm. This brings us uh, to our next release, which is uh, it a really sort of, it was a surprise release on Halloween. It's uh, Six Trap. Is it an EP? Is it a mini album? He says it's an EP. I say it's a mini album. He has, if he says he it's has the authority. <laughs> yeah, so. if it's his. Who is it? It's a mini album by Skepta, and it's called Vicious. A cranberry stain sitting inside my house with a candle and a flame. Working voodoo on you pussies, trying to put feces on my name. I saw the so a lot of people will have woken up on Halloween and gone, Kenichi, what? <gasps> There's a new Skepta album. Halloween's the new Christmas, isn't it? Yeah. Did you get presents that are sweets, then you get EPs that are get sweets for the years. From the uh, biggest crime artist in the world. And it, I mean, Wiley's is it, like, what? <laughs> sorry, Wiley. <laughs> <laughs> so is it? Yeah, I can't. I don't want to get involved in who's the biggest. <laughs> okay. One of the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did do you, is it Halloween themed? It's the, sort of a, yeah, it's okay. a bit, isn't so it? So let's let's rewind. Rewinding. Yeah. So Konnichiwa came out May 2016, which was Skepta's brilliant, brilliant record. Won the Mercury, got like Brit nominations, got an Ivan Novello. Yeah. Kind of reinvented himself as yeah the, the new kind of the grime the grime go to grime guy. He became a fashion icon. Like Skepta is looking so good right now. He's got this weird kind of like chic steampunk thing going yeah, on. It's good. Yeah. So Skepta, incredible, massive, big. So he's been quite busy for the past year. He's been going to a lot of kind of fashion weeks across the world. Mm -hmm. He's released a couple of well three tracks over the past year. He, he put two out last Halloween and one this summer. And then on Halloween this year, released this six track EP or mini album featuring three new tracks and the three tracks that had already been out. And Halloween, yes, it is sort of Halloween y. There's a track on there called Ghost Ride, which features ASAP Rocky. And he talks about Freddy Krueger. Freddy, Freddy Krueger. I can say it, it's fine. I just don't want to conjure him up. That's why I'm worried. That does, he doesn't work like that. I've not seen That's it. Candyman. So Oh, okay. Yeah. I've just specifically not seen uh, Freddy that film. will pop himself in your dreams without you wanting him there or not. So he sounds yeah. like a dick. He's got a good sense of humour, actually. Yeah, <laughs> is he one of the good He'll guys. He'll kill you, but in an amusing way. So that's fine. So that's all I can hope for. But this is good because we don't have enough Halloween music. We were sort of noticing no, this. No, there aren't any cool Halloween office. songs. There's just the Monster Mash, which is great, and there's. It was thriller. a graveyard smash, Dan. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. This thriller, and then once you get past that, you sort of stretch it a bit because you go mm. for stuff like Ghost Town by the Specials. When really that's the Halloween link that. is a metaphor for the broken Britain of the exactly. 1980s. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So but we want songs it. about ghosts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proper yeah. songs about ghosts. Yeah. So there's that reference on Ghost Ride, which is actually a, yeah, a great song. It's kind of doomy and dark and mysterious. Ooh, mm -hmm. Just like Halloween should be. And then he talks about, he says kind of Happy Halloween on a track as well. There's, uh, it's just, yeah, it's spooky. It's moody. It's minimal. It's very, very Skepta. 
And it's nice to get some new material from him as well to kind of tide us over till the Konnichiwa follow-up. Well, you wonder if kind of putting this sort of thing out just to ease a little bit of pressure because Kanichiwa was such a big album. It was. So kind of like critically lauded and getting the Mercury does kind of sort of ramp up the expectation for the next one. So this is, it has a real kind of feel to it as well, isn't it? It's a very laid back album. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, uh, well, it's a mini album. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite slow. It's quite sort of of a pace. It's, yeah. sort of, it's a good little kind of capsule, I think. Indeed, yeah. And definitely the Halloween, the, the song still that opens it. He wishes everyone a happy Halloween on that. Mm. He talks about Jason, who I believe... Jason Voorhees. Is he yeah. the, I don't know his surname. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Is it? From, from the film Halloween? Nope. What? No, Friday the oh, 13th. Oh, jeez. I'm glad I'm on with a um, scary film specialist. <laughs> yeah. him, so and, that, him and Freddie had a scrap once. I won't spoil oh, it. Oh, so Freddie's, yeah. yeah. Once again, who's the guy from Halloween then? Michael Myers, yeah. Doesn't he so do you the, get a shout out. Doesn't he do the documentaries? Austin Powers, you're thinking of Austin okay, Powers. No, I'm thinking of Michael Moore. <laughs> Anyway, so that's I feel like we've still. digressed a little it's bit. It's a perfect kind of snapshot as well of Skepta's production. It's that he does this kind of minimal thing very well. And Dev Hines is on that track as well, playing bass as well. So it's kind of good, like British talent. He talks about John Boyega, British talent, on that track as well. He mentions his, uh, his, his new shoes. He mentions his new shoes a couple of times on this record. Right. He designed some Nikes recently. He, right. <laughs> and, Great product placement. And there's, but there's Americans on here as well, so it isn't just like a Brits, because oh, Section Boys are on a track, but the, the Americans come in, so ASAP Rocky's on here, um, Little B's on a track called Sit Down, which it has got a kind of transatlantic kind of Even vibe you to it. you pronounce it Little, little B. Little B. <laughs> little B, all right. All right, Little B. Uh, little, little, little B. Little, little, little B. B is on a track called Sit Down, which apparently uh, Skepta wrote the beat on that on in an Uber on the aux cord, on uh, the cable, uh, just like one second, just making a brilliant, brilliant beat. Mm. So he does, he's a busy man. Do and you work in the back of Ubers, Dan? Uh, no, I sleep in them a lot. Uh, there's an ASAP Nast on there as well, isn't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. with ASAP Nast as well? He's in the mob. Um, so how many um, tiny, fun size Milky Ways out of five in a oh, trick-or-treat bag trick or treat. I get it, I get you it. give this I, I give it four because it's got no security on it, which I think is maybe my favourite Skepta okay. song because it's just really good. I'm so also, moody. I'm also going to give it a four. So that means this was a, a treat, not a trick. This, yeah. It does. Thanks what Skepta. a treat. Thank you, Skepta, for treating us, not tricking us. Now, stop right now. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. <laughs> uh, it's classic album time. Which is... Uh, it's the Spice Girls, isn't it, Dan? It's uh, Spice World, which is uh, 20 years old. Today! today. Throw yourself back. Throw yourself back 20 years to a time Ooh, when lo, 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 lo. the world was a very different place. I want to do that. Politicians were embroiled in sleaze scandals and... See what you know, you're doing here. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> not true anyway. I, I didn't prepare anything for that. Um, anyway, so 20 years ago, the, so the Spice Mania had really mm. taken hold after, oh, the, fully. after the 1996 release. Yeah, so this album Spice. only came out a year after Spice. How did they write them all so quickly? Who knows? There yeah. were five of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there <laughs> and many, a lot hands, of many hands make light work. Yeah. This really is, like, this is, if you're into the Spice Girls, mm -hmm. I'm going to be controversial and say this is the classic Spice Girls album, really. Whoa, this is, whoa, 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 Okay, it's not. Hold right, up, hold right, up, it's yeah. Not, it's just being controversial. Yeah. <laughs> but it has got some good songs on it's it. It's got some really good songs on it. It's got, um, stop right now. Yeah. I think the Motown one. Yeah. It's got Spice Up Your Life. People of the world, Spice Up Your Life. That song's not okay anymore, know, is it? Oh, gosh, yeah. There's some very unwoke things on that mm. song, aren't there? David uh, Williams might have liked yeah, it. That, that was I, part of this week. I don't really want to discuss it. It's not Fine, okay it's anymore, not okay. actually, yeah. That's their, that's their like, anyway, carnival you know, party tune. Change. Uh, it's got my personal, actual favourite Spice Girls song on it. Let me guess, is it Viva Forever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Was this that is... Christmas number one this year? This year? This year, Oh, 19... this year, because oh, we went back in no, time. 1997, no, yeah. You know, it might have been. This is, uh, interestingly, no, because it wasn't, because they'd released that as a single after Jerry left. Right. So Je this is the last Spice Girls album with Jerry on. Yeah. She left in May 1998. Which actually proves to you how kind of short the Spice Girls phenomenon actually was. Mm. It was only about two, three, three years maximum. Because, yeah, the first album came out in 96. She had left like two and a half years later. And that was sort of 
it, after Jerry left, it wasn't the same. Their third album, final album, Forever, came out in 2000, which was sort of a flop. Can you name any tracks on Forever? I can. Too much. No. No. Sorry. Forever. Goodbye. Goodbye. No. Yeah. I know you said it. Oh, that's but, really good. Like, I agree. The Spice Girls without Jerry is just pointless. Exactly. It's like a gin and tonic without the gin in it. It's just tonic. No one wants that. No. Cool. Well, you unless, could just have gin on it, so you couldn't you? Malaria. Mm. But. Um, it, I, I think that, like we, last week we were talking about the Sex Pistols, which was a band that mm -hmm. made massive cultural impact. Yes. In a really short space of time. Uh -huh. and actually, it's weird when you look back, like the Spice Girls, it felt like, for me, as someone who was into sort of indie music mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff at that time, and wasn't particularly enamoured with the Spice Girls and the fact that they did burst the Britpop bubble quite Oh yeah, so. they really did. Britpop <laughs> was over when the Spice Girls sounded. It was yeah, Corp Britannia and Girl Power, which they stole off Shampoo, mm, they by did. the way. And they've, they've acknowledged that. So I was a bit angry at them for that, but you know. You're angry uh, at the Spice Girls. <laughs> Damn it! Come here yeah. and take away all those miserable men with floppy hair. <laughs> with your fun. But in retrospect, they were, they were great, weren't they? But yeah, yeah they were like a real a... kind of, it was such a, a kind of a, a flash of an impact. So like mm. two albums in two years kind yeah. of did so much, had so much to say. Yeah, and that's like just such an amazingly strong message of female empowerment and sisterhood, which was not something that people were really talking about. Obviously, people were talking about feminism before, but almost... Even if they sometimes ruined it by saying that Thatcher was yeah, mm, yeah. the well, original girl Dan, nothing's part. perfect, is it? But yeah. they, yeah, they were a message, a really strong, powerful message to their audience, which was kind of eight-year-old girls and telling them like, all right, you don't... don't Boys are rubbish. Mm. But hang out with your female friends, have a lovely time. Even the song, is it like too much on here? Is that's like a, is it, is it too much? There's one that's. Too much of something, something is bad enough. Yeah, and maybe it's, it's not that one that like I'm thinking little, of. It's a mind labyrinth to There's go definitely into that. a song on here what that's about? like just. Oh, is it slowed? What's the slowed? Oh no, stop! It's the song Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Get what there a weirdly end. short memory you've got because we talked about that twice now. <laughs> but that's, the song "Stop" is yeah. about like not rushing into anything, kind of in a romantic or kind of sexual right. way, which but in a in a kind of kid-friendly way. So, so it's, it's a good message so for girls. It's like you don't need to go out and snog loads of boys. Right. You know, oh. just be, just do you. It's like a big sister advice. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds a bit sort of. Is it a bit prudish? Or? <laughs> I don't think it's prudish. At all. No, I think it's okay. a good one. You can if you want. How many, how many million copies do you think they sold in, in two weeks? 100,000 million copies. No, 1.4 million oh, okay. copies. But that's not bad, considering no. you, know, you had to buy it in those days. And I bet well. you didn't buy it. I didn't buy it, no. no. Do you, I also didn't go and see the film Spice World, which confusingly, so Spice World album is one word. Yeah, Spice yeah, yeah. World, the film is Spice World. Do you think that's just a kind of sobbing error? I think it was, but yeah, did know, like, you go and see Spice World? Yeah, Spice World's actually really good. It's got Rich D. Grant in it and it's one of his best Tell me, roles. Did you go to see it at the cinema? Yeah. Tell me about the experience of that. Uh, did you go dressed as a Spice Girl? No, it would have been at the, um, the cinema in Lee Valley, which was quite a big, big megaplex just outside of Tottenham. And um, you could go there and you could see loads of films um, even if you just paid for one, because you could just sneak into different screens. So I'd often spend all day there. Right. Yeah. Is that illegal? Yeah, it is. You just revealed it on camera as well. No, I didn't do that. It's a joke. Did you dance during the musical numbers? I think I was a bit... Um, I pretended I didn't like the Spice Girls, but I did. Right. I pretended oh, okay. I was too cool for it, but actually yeah. I thought they were brilliant. Yeah. And I've just admitted to that as well. That's true, not the cinema thing. Was the film any good? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically like A Hard Day's Night. It's a total rip-off. Like, they've mm. got a big show at the Royal Albert Hall and it's about all the kind of japes they get up to in the run-up to it. It's, mm. The acting's not very good, but, I mean, so? Like, sort of carry-on 90s pop band. So yeah, anyway, it's, probably, it's like, it's oh, no, more fun than if Sam Smith made a film. Yeah, it's, just, it's fun and it's silly oh, and, okay. like I said, Rich D. Grant's in it. Yeah. What mm. film isn't improved by Rich D. Grant? <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, there's probably some, actually. How many uh, pain shoes of... Not Meg, from the Spice Cupboard, would you give oh. uh, five? This, this is getting laboured this week, isn't it? Would you yeah. give Spice World? Three. Three. I'm going to give it a three as well. Yeah, because the singles are really good, but there's quite a lot of filler on there as well, yeah. isn't there? So three. Yeah. But well done to the Spice Girls for being a pop cultural phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> um, well, that's, sort of, that's it, isn't it, really, for this yeah, week? Yeah, for this week. But I'm sure there'll be more albums next week. There's always albums, that's the thing. And where there's albums, there is Album Club. <laughs> Hope to see you there. Bye.